You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 20th of February and I'm Nick from Milford. It was a busy week last week, both on an economic data and equity front. The key economic focus in the US was the January CPI print that came out on Wednesday morning. Both headline and core CPI came in line with market expectations at 0.5% and 0.4% month-on-month respectively. Another key print was the US retail sales which did come in much hotter than expected. Total sales rose 3% month-on-month compared to market expectations of just 1.8%. This follows a weak December print that was down 1.1% month-on-month. The rise in spending was broad-based across many of the categories, but led by department stores, food services and drinking places, and motor vehicles and parts. The data indicates robust consumer demand after a slowdown last year and supports the hawkish messaging from the Fed for rates to continue rising. Another surprise in the raft of US data was the US producer price index coming in above consensus. Headline PPI was up 0.7% month-on-month compared to expectations of 0.4%, and core PPI, excluding food and energy, was up 0.5% month-on-month compared to expectations of 0.3%. Remember, the producer price index is a measure of the change in prices that domestic producers receive for goods and services and can be seen as a leading indicator for CPI. Finally in the US, we had various pieces of conflicting data on the housing market. Building permits and housing starts were both below expectations, showing further signs of weakness in housing demand, but we did see the NAHP Housing Sentiment Index up from 35 to 42. Moving to the UK, we had January CPI which came in below market expectations for both headline and core. Core CPI was minus 0.9% month on month compared to market estimates of minus 0.5%, a positive sign in the right direction to bring inflation under control. UK employment data was also out, with the number of people in work growing by 74,000 in the three months to December 2022, well above market expectations of 40,000. The unemployment rate remained tight at 3.7%, and lastly, wage inflation pressures continued with the average earnings excluding bonuses rising to 6.7% quarter on quarter, versus expectations of 6.2. Closer to home, we had the REINZ housing data out in New Zealand, where prices continued to ease for the 14th consecutive month, down 1.2%. We also saw food price inflation slow to 10.3% from 11.3% in December. And finally, a key piece of data in New Zealand, the two-year-ahead inflation expectation print, which decreased to 3.3% for Q1, down from 3.62% last quarter. Lastly, in Australia, we had the employment data out on Thursday, which came in much weaker than expected, and the number of Australians working decreased by 11.5 thousand, compared to an estimated increase of 20 thousand. The unemployment rate also increased to 3.7 percent, ahead of consensus and up from 3.5 percent last month. The RBA will welcome this evidence of an easing labour market, but it won't be enough to alter the recent more hawkish tilt. Finally, the Westpac Consumer Sentiment Index fell 6.9% to 78.5%, with cost of living pressures and interest rate rises continuing to be the key drivers of weakness. Turning to equity news, reporting season continues to kick off in Australia, and although it's still early days, initial results suggest it's going to be a weaker than expected reporting season. The number of companies beating expectations is below average, with a higher miss rate and an increasing number of companies giving weaker guidance. We had 68 companies report last week, one being JB Hi-Fi, a consumer electronics and home appliances retail company. They largely pre-released their first half results, so the focus was on the trading update. The update saw sales momentum slow, and the outlook showed potential signs that the retailer is beginning to crack. We also had global building materials company James Hardy release a softer-than-expected result. This was driven by very weak volumes and cost pressures coming through. In North America, volumes fell by 10% against the prior comparable period, evidencing the weakness of the US housing market. We also had the Australian banks report during the week. CBA had a solid result, but it was their guidance on net interest margins that was important. They noted that due to mortgage and deposit competition that they saw peak margins in October. Westpac and NAB both also had strong results, broadly in line with the market. Looking to the week ahead, reporting season continues here domestically with 141 companies reporting this week. We get the RBA minutes out on Tuesday, the RBNZ official cash rate decision on Wednesday and the FOMC minutes out on Thursday. Throughout the week, we also have the US GDP growth rate estimate, core PCE and various PMIs around the globe. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.